Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we have a couple follow-up stories today. One about the man who had to be airlifted from uh, Samoa last week or the week before because he came down with some sort of an illness. And uh, yeah, it was like one of those dream vacations. I'll, I'll tell you all about what's going on there. We have Carnival Cruise Line, uh, John Heald once again having to explain two rumors, well, one rumor and one thing that's going on that I don't even know why somebody asked the question, but somebody did. But we also have a rumor that that Facebook page that he keeps talking about is trying to push again, and it's uh, once again a complete lie, but hey, I guess you can always trust people on Facebook. <laughs> And then finally we have an update with the government getting involved on that cruise ship that got stuck in that storm and didn't make it to port and had to ride it out in 50, 60 foot waves and 100 people injured. Well, now the government wants to know what the heck happened. We'll start off with the sad news today. The gentleman who was airlifted, his name was Dave Krokos, and from a trip from LA back to Australia with stops in Hawaii and places like, you know, along the tropical islands. And well, he became ill and so much so that he ended up being bedridden. And then this was on the Majestic Princess and then he was got so bad that the doctors said, hey, you need some treatment and you need something more than we can do right now. So we're going to sideline them our, ourselves and bring you to a hospital, the closest hospital we can, which was in Samoa. They dropped him off there and then he had to be, you know, they didn't even have the facilities for how severe he had become. He was having some very severe organ shutdowns and they couldn't understand why. They couldn't figure it out there. So arrangements were made. There was one cancellation of a flight, but they eventually did get him back on uh, November 4th, back to Brisbane, uh, where unfortunately a few days later here, he has passed away to this mysterious illness. Family did say the ship did everything they could to help him out and I'm glad to hear that because often when this kind of thing the first thing that comes to some people's mind is sue the cruise line but apparently the doctors were very good and they were trying their best and they got him to the closest hospital they could and so as far as the ship is concerned they literally did everything possible that they could but again it's sad news um, I was hoping it would have a happy ending but some people were saying so what happened is he okay and so I thought I'd do the follow-up on that speaking of follow-up well the government now wants to know with that saga cruise ship the spirit of discovery just what happened how did you get stuck in this storm why were people's lives put in danger how many you know a hundred people getting injured on your ship your ship getting damaged being stuck in 50 foot waves is not a common occurrence on a cruise ship especially a smaller luxury cruise ship it's just not something that happens and so they want to know what happened? Were there outlying areas saying, you know, the reasoning? Would, did somebody just make a bad call? Was somebody looking at the bottom line saying, no, if we get, you know, if we stay there, we don't have to refund this much money? Was it a financial thing? What was it? What was the cause? Was it just bad guessing on the weather? Did something cause this ship to be in that storm? There was a reason. It could have been just poor management or made a mistake we thought it was less than it was and it turned out worse that kind of thing but the government wants to know when you come back and people's lives were at risk and there's a hundred people come off your ship injured scared for their lives texting people where their will is in case the worst happens you know you're you've done something wrong and yeah that's where that stands next we have Two things from Carnival Cruise Line that John Heald once again already uh, early in the week 
has to explain to people and I, I, don't un, I don't understand some of these things that happen for some reason. People like to pick on Carnival. While it's not my go-to cruise line, they definitely have some beautiful ships and, and they have great entertainment on board. There's lots to do. They got roller coasters on board, water slides. There's a, there's a big Broadway show. There's lots to do on a Carnival ship and there's lots of fun to be had. But some people just want to tear them down like uh, these next two stories. But before I get there, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you wanna keep up to date with everything going on in cruising, from the brand new Celebrity Ascent, which I'm on in less than two weeks now, way less than two weeks. And I'm also got my ticket soon for the Icon of the Seas. I'll be one of the first people on that ship. I'm on the inaugural sailing, first passengers. Yeah, can't wait. Hope everything's ready. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tag along, we'll tell you the news, we'll keep you updated, and maybe save you some money in the meantime. It doesn't cost a single thing, but boy, it really does help the channel out when you subscribe, and I really do appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about these stories. So John Heald had to deal with two already this morning, and one is a rumor, and one is uh, somebody angry about something. And here's the first one. I, I don't, I'm, people sometimes just boggle my mind. Carnival has millions of passengers who are smokers. They are all being treated like orphans. Stop using the refueling excuse to ban more smokers. It's BS. I am on the Venezia from New York. Everyone smokes in New York. This is not California. The signs everywhere saying no smoking means we could not smoke for four hours after getting on the cruise ship. Okay. Even John Heald is kind of flabbergasted when somebody asks this kind of question. He says, obviously we are not gonna allow smoking for obvious reasons when we're refueling, either by tanker truck or by barge on the ship. And it, it's common sense, right? You're not supposed to smoke while you're filling your tank at the gas station. You're not supposed to smoke when you're, like picture that gas tank that you have at the gas station, multiply it by a thousand with a barge full of fuel. And all you would need is some absent-minded person to go flick like this and you blow up the ship and you kill people because you had to not smoke for four hours. That's, uh, you know, I understand addiction, but, uh, cause I can be addicted to like soda that I have to, you know, I need my soda, I need this. But if somebody tells me, hey, if you drink that soda in the next four hours, something might happen that you could actually blow up the ship. Also, fumes are emitted and sometimes there's a, a fuel, you know, spillage while they're doing it. There's all kinds of reasons not to smoke while they're fueling the ship. And I think that's a pretty reasonable ask. And if you have a hard time, then be one of the last people on the ship. Don't be early to the ship. Don't be the 11 o'clock person. Be the three o'clock person. That way, when you get on the ship, the refueling's done and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Simple fix. Next is that Facebook page is out again that John Heal keeps referencing out that they're full of VIP members and that they always start these rumors that are completely untrue. And the newest one that they've started is you're not allowed to take food from the buffet or the Lido deck to your cabin. I don't know a cruise line in the world that, lo that stops people from walking from the buffet back to your cabin. It's a well-known practice that's out there. People do it all the time. And sometimes people do that just to save space from the main dining room. They don't feel like going up to the main dining room. They just want to relax in their cabin. They'll go up, fill up their things with buffet, and they'll go back to their room. Not too big a deal. And he says, there is no truth whatsoever to this rumor. But of course, that Facebook page always says, yes it is, it's absolutely true. No, no, once again, it's not true. They are not stopping people from taking food from the buffet. Well, 
Let me know what you guys think. Do you think, hey, smoking should be allowed when they're refueling the ships? I, I think that's, a, I think that's a, a reasonable request. What do you think is going to happen with that government inquiry, if anything, about the cruise ship Spirit of Discovery getting stuck in that storm? Do you think um, some heads just might roll along the decision-making process on that ship? We'll see. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. To see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.